Hey everybody, it's me Fadi and welcome again to another episode of how to build and maintain a reef aquarium. Today, I'll speak about refugium and macroalgae. A refugium or fuge is a remote location that provides an isolated environment separate from the main aquarium for the cultivation of macroalgae, live foods and biological denitrification. Refugiums are great because they provide means to export waste and extra nutrients and also provide a safe haven for small beneficial organisms to grow and reproduce. How do the refugium work? Microalgae removes phosphate and nitrates, lowering harmful nutrients levels. Refugium also acts as a live food nursery for amphipods and copepods and other microorganisms that corals and fish love to eat. As some of these pods will make its way to the main aquarium, they will feed the animals in your reef tank and increase the biodiversity of your aquarium. Fish like the green mandarin will thrive in aquariums with mature refugium as these fish only consume live pods so refugium will keep a constant supply of food to help sustain this fish. We talked about some infiltration in episodes 2 and 7 and I said that refugium can be a dedicated section in the sump. Many ready-made sumps already have dedicated refugium section. If you don't have a dedicated place in your sum, you can have a hand-gone refugium or a remote refugium. Choosing the right macroalgae is very important. The most common algae is Ketomorpha. The reefers have great success with it. It's fast grower, removes nutrients, easy to harvest, and provides a perfect habitat for pods and microfauna to grow and reproduce. Calorba is another very common algae. Though it's very popular, it comes with some risks. Calorba is very hardy, which is great for our refugium. However, it can choke other competing algae for light and nutrients. Calorba can also send spores to your main display tank. Many reefers will refer to this as Calorba going sexual. In this case, Calorba can take over your display tank and can choke your own corals. Microalgae needs light to grow. In tank and hang on refugiums will most likely benefit from the main aquarium lights and there is no need to add extra lights for them. Refugiums located remotely or under the tank in the sun will need a light source. A basic full spectrum LED fixture is perfect for this application. Any full spectrum light will be good for growing macroalgae, but some lights perform better than others. Plats and algae like LED lights with heavy red and blue color spectrum for maximum growth. I use this Kessel H380 Halo on my refugium. It's a good idea to illuminate the tank and refugium on a different light cycles. The idea is to balance the effect of oxygen production and CO2 removal. When the tank lights are off, photosynthesis stop inside your aquarium and the corals will no longer uptake CO2. This leaves an increased amount of CO2 dissolved in your aquarium, which lowers the pH value. By running your refugium lights, when the main tank lights are turned off, algae inside the refugium will continue to uptake CO2 and help reduce the natural pH swing inside your tank. And this will result in much more stable pH values in your aquarium. As microalgae grows, it's important to harvest a portion every month or so and remove it from the refugium. Nutrients absorbed by the algae can be leaked out, especially when the algae starts to die off. By harvesting, you ensure that the nutrients are removed completely from your tank. This also will open space for a new microalgae to grow and to continue absorbing more nutrients. A very common practice when harvesting macroalgae from a refugium is to take the removed clump of algae and shake it gently to release the buds back into the refugium. Seeding your refugium with buds is highly recommended, especially with a newly established aquarium that they didn't establish yet a healthy population of buds. Some reefers use mud or live sand as substrate for the refugium. However, it's not required and I personally don't use any substrate in the refugium to keep things simple and clean. In my refugium, I just use a few pieces of rubber rock 
and a large clump of ketomorph. There are three main configurations to utilize a refugium after skimmer section, before skimmer section, and after return section. All these three methods will work and everybody has his own preference. Many reefers place the refugium after the skimmer section. And the reason for that that they think that the pods will not be sucked by the skimmer. To be honest, I didn't notice this in my tank. I have the fuge section before the skimmer section and the main display is full of pods. I prefer to have the refugium before the skimmer section. When the entire flow is passing through the fuge before the skimmer, you make sure that the Kato will absorb as much nutrients as possible. Also, pods will have enough food. If you are using the Triton method, the refugium must be before the skimmer section and should be at least 10% of volume of the main display tank. The third way is by adding the refugium after the return section. You make a bypass from the return going to the fuge section with a valve to control flow. This is helpful for reefer that prefers to have a slow flow passing through the refugium, slower than the sump flow. If there isn't a dedicated section for a fuge in the sump or there is no place to add a remote refugium, you can use an algae reactor. Algae reactor is an easy way to grow algae. It's a simple reactor body with light to grow the algae inside. It's better to have a reactor body that is not transparent so the light doesn't leach out and encourage algae grow to grow in undesired places. For example, in my sump, coralline algae is growing everywhere, even on the skimmer pump and inside the skimmer body. So I need to clean the skimmer more often. An algae scrubber filters water by moving water rapidly over a rough, highly illuminated surface, which causes algae to start growing in large amounts. As the algae grows, it consumes nutrients such as nitrate and phosphate. That's it for today. Next week, I'll talk about regular maintenance, how to do water changes, and how to clean the tank. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you next week.